You know, there are three main types of people that go to church on a given Sunday. The first type are people that I call church folks. They're religious. They do it because mama and them did it. They do it because grandma and them did it. They do it because their family grew up in that particular church or their family has some type of relationship with that church. Those are church folks. They're religious. They only do it as a way to show respect or pay homage to God. They don't do it because they want to grow in a relationship with Jesus. They don't do it because they want to really be a disciple of Christ. They do it because it's just tradition. It's just something they do. These are people that typically show up for church on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. These are the real CME Christians. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Those are your church folks. Those are the ones who don't really cause much drama at the church because they're rarely there. But they're the ones that complain about what the church is not doing in a community. They're the ones that complain on social media. They're the ones that are always bad mouthing Christians. But yet they're not a part of the group. They're not actively contributing to the betterment of the body of Christ. They're the mockers. They're the ones that stand on the side and mock Christians. That's the first group. Then you have the second group. Now these folks are not the church folks that you have in the first group. These are what I call the cultural Christians where they are very active in the church. They do a lot of stuff in the church. They post all kinds of things online, identifying them as Christians. They post the scripture, they post verses, they, they post videos of preachers. They post all kinds of things. They give off the impression of being a true disciple, a true believer. But when you look at their fruit, it's something quite different. As a matter of fact, all you gotta do is go to their house and spend a little time with them. Ride in their car, turn on their radio, listen to what music comes out of their radio, go into the house. They probably got some bottles in the refrigerator, probably in the refrigerator in the garage so nobody can see it. They got some other stuff going on that if you spend more time with them, you start to really locate where they are. Those are the most dangerous group because they are the ones that will decide to do things that are not in alignment with the word of God. These are the folks that I call church Negroes because they don't value the Bible over their race or their gender. They may say that they do. These are the ones, like I said, they can post scripture, they can post sayings, they can post preaching. They do all those things to give off the appearance. Like the Bible says in the last days, they have a form of godliness. They do all these things to give off the appearance of being a true believer, a disciple. But when you examine their life, you see they don't follow what the Bible says. As a matter of fact, they outright have a disdain for what the Bible says. They outright rebel against what the Bible says. And so those are what I call your cultural Christians or your church Negroes. And like I said, they're the most dangerous ones because they lead a lot of people astray. They're the ones when the preacher says something that they don't agree with, especially when it comes to how you live your life or when it comes to the election. They're the ones that will pull up shop and leave your church. And when they leave your church, then they'll go online and disparage you and talk about the church and talk about the pastor and talk about all these things. They are your church Negroes, your cultural Christians. And the majority of these folks exist in traditional black churches. They do. Let's be real about it. They exist in your traditional black churches. These are your church Negroes.
And then you have the last group, which is a very, very small group, very small group, which are the true disciples, the true believers, where they will do what the word of God says, no matter what. It's not about race with them. It's not about gender with them. It's not about orientation with them. It's all about what thus says the Lord. Now, these people are not at times as vocal as the prior two types because these people are busy doing what the Lord has them to do. And I would venture to say that even a lot of pastors don't fall within the true disciple or the true believer category. I would say most pastors may fall within the church Negro or the cultural Christians. That's why a lot of pastors, especially your black pastors for the most part, don't speak out about things that are detrimental to the black community. They are detrimental to Christians. Cause do you know if Kamala Harris gets elected and they get a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. They want to pass this Equality Act, which will essentially muzzle Christians and muzzle pastors from speaking the truth of the Bible. Did you know that? You probably don't know that because if you listen to mainstream news or go on any social media site that's primarily geared towards black folks, you won't hear that. They won't tell you about what's really the agenda behind the Kamala Harris campaign. So those are your three types. You have your first type, the church folks who go to church sparingly, who really don't have any type of connection from a discipleship standpoint, yet at the same time, they want to cast stones at Christians, at churches. Then you got your number two, your cultural Christians or your church Negroes. Those are the ones that are the most dangerous because they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They're the ones who, like I said, when it comes to deciding, and see, that's what it says. When, when Romans 10, 17 talks about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In the Greek, it really means that it's an interaction with the word of God and you have to decide, are you going to believe God's word or believe your circumstance or believe the culture? And those cultural Christians believe the culture. Those cultural Christians, those church Negroes, subscribe to what the culture says over God's word. They do. Then you have your last group, which are the true believers, the true disciples. They live their lives according to the word of God. The word of God is the final authority in their lives. And they do the best that they can with the help of the Lord to live lives that are in accordance with and in alignment with scripture. This is a very, very small group, very small group. And this group, but this group is the most powerful group because this group has the presence of the Lord with them. This group has a real relationship with God through Jesus. And these are the ones that you see making an impact in the culture. These are the ones who are taking bold stances for Christ and not ashamed and not afraid. And these are the ones that the prior two people hate the most because the prior two people disdain the last group because the last group shines the light on their fakeness. And so they don't like that last group and they do whatever they can to demean them, to disparage them, to destroy them. Sad, but that's but those are the three types of people that typically attend a church, especially a black one.